Okay, BEB Everything Family, this is John Ellis, EB guy, coming to you from Laurel, Mississippi. We're about to head to West Virginia. Yeah, just uh, about 800 miles. So people are asking, well, I mean, are you nervous? Not at all. I've route mapped, you can go look on uh, BEV Everything Facebook or Instagram page or LinkedIn page, even our Mighty Networks page, and you'll see that I've got a map uh, completely dialed out for that this 12 hour trip. And of course, we're going through some rural areas. It's always important not only to map it out, but also to have, um, you know, contingency stops, right? So let's say that uh, you're driving too fast or the weather gets real cold up there and I lose 20% of my battery life, so I'm not quite to the to the destination I need to be. Uh, there'll be one in between. That's how well the Tesla network is and that's how reliable uh, the Tesla network can be because they work. When you find one, you don't have to worry what does it work. So we're gonna take this journey together. I'm gonna video uh, my stops so you People ask all the time, you know, what are the stops like? How long do they take? Uh, is it very inconvenient? All of my stops are less than a quarter of a mile off the interstate, half a mile maybe at the most. Um, and then of course, you know, I've got some sandwiches. So I'm gonna eat, use the restroom. You'll see it's 10, 20, 25 minutes max, depending on how low I get with my battery life. Super excited about this. So we'll take this trip together. This is John Ellis with uh, BEV Everything, founder of BEV Everything with Duran Cage, founder of the Automotive Advisor Team. Uh, part of that company is Double E Consulting, which is my used car optimization uh, company that we uh, consult and we have software, uh, help dealers maximize their used car operations. So reach out if you need anything. Otherwise, just stay along for the ride. Okay, BEV family, we're on the road, just like we said we were, headed to Grafton, West Virginia. We're, you know, 30 minutes into our trip. We have 75% battery life. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about some of the mapping that I do in my head before and once I'm on the road. It's very important because if you route map your trip, then there shouldn't be any worry about range. Range anxiety should not be an issue. This car, it roughly gets about 200 miles on average. Um, the car I'm going to go pick up and swap for this one will get close to 300. Both of those are less than a full tank of gasoline. But for me personally, this 200 mile car, roughly is about a three hour drive. And by that time, I usually need to go to the restroom at 55 years old. It's just, there's no way around it. And one of the kids, or my wife and I, one of us wants to get something to eat. So, instead of stopping every four hours, maybe we stop every three hours. But the stops are only 10 or 15 minutes max if all we're doing is charging. But if we go get something to eat, that's our choice and it's longer. The stops are also only about a half a mile to a mile off the interstate. So we're not, with the truckers we call deadheading. There's not wasted uh, miles in that trip. As I said before, we travel the whole Southeast watching Carson play baseball. So we're, we're excited about having another 100 mile range just because um, it, it, it's more convenient, but it's not necessary. Personally, I'm excited about getting the performance model with dual motors and the extra torque. So I'm gonna show you that and how this works, but just to let you know, my first stop is in about an hour and I'll have about 45-50% battery health at that point in your life and you're going to go, oh, why are you stopping then? Well, my next stop, that, that'll let me decide to go two, three, two and, two, two and a half or three hours further next trip. Meaning, if I just wanted to go to my next destination, I really only have one I can go to. Uh, I can barely make it there with maybe 10% left. Now, since I'm stopping here, I'll, I'll juice up a little bit, maybe five minutes worth it gives me three more options. And that's the mapping you do once you get on the road. I'll choose to drive all the way through, 180 miles, three hours, or I will choose to you know, stop at one of the ones before. Once I have a choice in what I wanna do, and I'm not forced into a decision because of lack of range or availability, then my life becomes a lot easier. I can enjoy the trip, talk to my family, listen to the radio. There's no anxiety in my mind. So that's what 
we call route mapping, route planning, and dealers out, I'm speaking to you specifically, these are conversations you need to have with your folks. We have training materials for this. We have data from studies to back up you know, the claims that we make about mileage needs. And then at the end of the day, once they're very comfortable with it, then they probably need to demo one. If you have one on the lot and you have some EV specialists that you're using, have them demo the EV for a couple of days. Now look, Tesla's probably the only EV in the industry right now that can allow you to be as free as I am today in talking to you. Every other EV has some limitations in infrastructure. Now, there's a network of partnerships happening between OEMs and Tesla to change that, and you'll, you'll see those evolving in the next couple of years. But right now, if you're in a Mach-E, you can't do what I'm doing today. You can't drive from Laurel to West Virginia with the assurance that the stations are going to work when you get there and that you've got enough stations. Only Tesla has an advanced, comprehensive network that's also reliable and duplicatable, meaning you have a contingency plan. I say all that to say other EVs probably need that local town demographic. The person who's just going to drive it within 100, 120 to 200 miles max round trip back home. So if they go to the office, it's 50 miles. You know, I used to live in Houston, and I drove to the from the Galleria home to the Woodlands, and that was about an hour and a half time-wise, only 40 minutes maybe. But that's I'd be perfect electric vehicle driver for that. So I say all that to say, dealers, you need to teach your folks about range anxiety, about route mapping, about um, the interview, not the sales conversation for prospective EV owners, and of course, uh, qualifying those owners into an ICE vehicle or an EV, depending on what their answers are, which you guys come to a conclusion around their true needs. Once you do all that, EVs do not become scary. Now look, I know you're going to say, well, the Tesla price has dropped up. Okay, I'm, I'm a victim of that. This Tesla I bought a year and a half ago, I'm, I probably lost $10,000 in value. Maybe, maybe as much as twelve to fourteen, but roughly ten thousand in true value, not just regular depreciation because of Elon's price changes, right? But I'm also going to buy. This is a used one. I'm going to buy another used one, and that one's been affected as well. The new ones are all getting sizable tax credits. So if I'm a dealer and I'm buying a, uh, an EV, I'm just going to make sure I know best of my ability, the true value of that EV, and maybe bake in some of that artificial depreciation, even if it hasn't happened again yet. And the consumer, me, the one turning it in, should know, hey, I can't give you face value of this car today because it could drop the price tomorrow to take me two weeks or two months to sell it. So here's the fair market value for your car, and take it or leave it. And if you play that game and price the car right, like Jimmy Douglas says, get it out there within you know, 12 to 14 days, it's flipped. You're gonna make a lot of money in EVs this time of year when, when supply is high, low and used car prices are so high. We can help you with that. We've got the model, we've got the acquisition strategy model, we've got the buying team in place. Double uh, E Consulting, my company, that's under my umbrella company, the automotive advisor team, has all of those players in place to build a comprehensive strategy for you to execute in your used car department. So anyway, that's not what this call is about. This is BEV Everything, another company I co-founded where we do consulting and content management for dealers as they go through LMSs and other training acumen so that they can become ready for electrification. Reach out if you want help there. Uh, as you can see, I haven't touched the steering wheel yet. We've got self-driving here, all's well. Um, I'm gonna join my trip. I'll be at my stop in about 45 minutes when I get there. You and I are gonna talk again. I'll show you how easy it is. Until then, the EV got out. Okay, as you can see, we're experiencing a little rain and um, pulling into the first charger. And I want to kind of give you a view of how that looked. Now, as you can tell, we're in a pretty commercial area here now. Um, I know it's hard to see because we're going a little quicker than uh, probably the video allows you, but 
We're gonna pull into a nice shopping mall, an actual, uh, actual mall, not a uh, strip mall. And you're gonna see that there'll be places for me to do a few things. And I'll show you that. This is my first stop. It's very convenient. It'll be very lit if it was later at night. You'll see that as we go along. Uh, the chargers are going to be there and numerous and working and you're also going to see that um, it doesn't take very long and I think that's the beauty of it most people want to say hey okay but you got to stop you know four or five times on this trip and it's what an hour to three hours every time you stop and of course it's just not now for most other charging networks it is and I understand that so I tried to make light of that but here at the BEV Everything team, we've always said, and if you see any of my EV Guy podcasts, I've never failed to say this. If you're an entry-level user or a road warrior, you must get a Tesla. Not because Teslas are a better EV than some of these nicer ones that are coming out and more luxurious and from legacy automakers who have um, some functionality that maybe uh, this iPhone in a car doesn't have. The fact is, the infrastructure is here to support the consumer experience. You're driving happiness. So that's what is missing with every other EV manufacturer. And that's why Tesla is the behemoth that is today. I know VinFast and all these others are claiming we do more electric vehicles. And maybe they do a few more. But um, PHEV plus BEV combined. But they'll never have the satisfaction that Tesla has until they build this network. So as you can see... There are a couple of Teslas here, and I'm pulling into mine. There's many stations open. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight here. And we're in their small town of Meridian, Mississippi. So, um, you know, these you'll see as we travel through the night that these bigger towns are much larger uh, Tesla stops. But this is mine, and I'm going to stop. Now, let me document where we are and what time it is so you can see how quickly... We charge so it is I'm at 38% at 355 so by the time I get everything set up it'll be four o'clock and I'll show you um, with um, you know anyway with, with everything it doesn't take long here is the mall as you can see it is a full-fledged shopping mall as it all are the other stations and here's my Tesla charger and look how hard this is <laughs> I'll pull it out I bring it to my car I press a button and I plug it in, and lo and behold, I'm done. See it blinking? I'm charging, and we're going to be all done. It won't take long at all. So, I get back in my car. I would walk over to the mall for a minute, but uh, I don't want to. Uh, it's raining. 20 minutes to continue my trip. So, as I said, it's not very long. Um, I've got this thing charging to 85% or 80%, as you can see, because that's where I like it and where it can get me to the next destination. But... Uh, you know, if I had stopped here at 40%, it would be less than 20 minutes. So people say all the time, well, you know, it's just, I just can't stop and wait two and three hours every time I run out of battery. Well, it's not the case. And you'll see that. And some of them will be faster. That's only 147 kilowatt. Uh, so 625 miles in an hour I can put on this car. But some of them might get to 240 kilowatts, which would be double the time. And then it would be 10 minutes remaining. So um, it just depends on the... Um, you know, the usage, right? It could be that these other cars are taking some of the kilowatts, right? Or it could be, uh, you know, the power there. So anyway, no big deal what it is, but the point is um, it's not inconvenient. So I'm going to go ahead and have a sandwich. I think I've got my lunch back there. I'm going to do. Here it is. And then I'm going to be on my way. So again, here's John Ellis, the BEV guy, saying keep it electric. All right, BEV, everything crew. It's about 7.30, another couple of hours have gone by. I'm here uh, charging the Tesla again. And as you can see, uh, I'm at a Love's. Nice, well-lit Love's gas station with a Subway and a Godfather's Pizza. We're gonna go and uh, use a restroom. It says I've got, let's see, I'll show you. I've got uh, 25 minutes remaining. This was a long trip, so I was down to about 25 when I got here and I'm charging up to 95 now to go to my next destination so I have all the range I need but look at this isn't this great I mean we talk about where are you going to charge is it well lit security does it work um, how many stations do you have am I going to be waiting you know I'll have 25 minutes here but I haven't eaten 
Uh, you saw me at the Holiday Inn Express last and I just got some coffee. So I'm gonna eat, probably get a Subway, use the restroom, old girl charges. Boy, I'm gonna miss her. Mother one is gray, the performance dual motor. So I like my black, but she just doesn't have the range I want anymore. But again, I mean, well lit, loves, no problem. Great place to charge and get a cup of coffee just like I would if I was getting some fuel. So we'll uh, keep you on the journey. We're gonna go all the way to Bristol, Tennessee tonight. I'm gonna spend the night and then uh, take another couple hours in the morning to head up to West Virginia. All right, EV guy out. Well, let's see, it is 11 o'clock. I just uh, charged up in, where was I? Chattanooga, so North Tennessee. So now I'm headed to Bristol where I'll spend the night. Because of the time change, I'll get there at like 2.45 in the morning. And then get up and finish the uh, last leg of the trip, which will be about three hours to West Virginia. Certainly long trip with an EV or an ICE engine. I think the map tells you it's 12 hours um, just by mileage alone, 12 and a half hours. Much too long for me to do in one day. And uh, of course, as you naysayers would say, well, I've had to stop four times already and I'll probably have to stop two more tomorrow. Um, and that's just the way it is. But these stops, I just stopped uh, and it took me 18 minutes. So I'm okay with that. And uh, I'm probably, so if you think about it, two times four is eight. Um, so I think I'll go this way. So two times four is eight. So um, 80 minutes. So I, I busted an hour and 20 minutes. I would have stopped and eaten. So let's say um, half of that. So yeah, the EVs cost me probably 45 minutes extra, but well worth it in the infotainment, the enjoyment, the speed, the, uh, no hands-free hands -free driving. And of course, most importantly, the amount of fuel I'm saving. So I know it's hard to see me. I'm here, uh, excited to keep you on the journey with me. I'll uh, see you in Bristol. EV guy out. Good evening, BEB family. It's John Ellis, the EV guy, charging one last time before my hotel. Uh, as you can see, I've been a lot less frequent in these videos because I'm going about 225 miles in 40 degree weather up big hills and embankments. Um, so the range is not exact because I'm losing a lot because of weather and uh, elevation and yet I'm still two times uh, more range than I had in my other one. So there she is again. As you can see, there's our Tesla. Another lit, highly secure area. There's a security guard driving around I saw. Boot barn here, a Dick's there. But look what I see. You know, we don't get a lot of these, right? Uh, there's some... Uh, Fast Charge Tennessee stations, and they're available from Charge Point. So, hey, Charge Point, nice job. They say they're available, and um, they look operable. So I'm going to assume that they are. There's, there's many of them. There's four of them here. And uh, each one of them, I have, think they have two. Yeah, they have two plugs. So each one of them have two. That's two, four, six, eight chargers, just like Tesla has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's 16 chargers here. How cool is that? Where am I? I'm in Bristol, Tennessee. So I'll sleep here tonight. Got a couple of calls. Hey, don't miss BEV Everything's Fixed Ops Clubhouse call tomorrow. We're going to have that in the morning. I'll wake up for that. Probably only sleep four or five hours. And then I've got a couple other conference calls with clients. And then I'm going to get on the road, see a good friend, Todd Arents, who I haven't seen in a while. Hopefully be home tomorrow night by about 7 or 8 p.m. It's been an amazing trip, but, uh, you know, as I had expected and you guys all wondered, could you make a 900-mile trip in a Tesla Model 3 mid-range, uh, which is, you know, one of the lowest-range EVs on the market? And the answer is yes. And the reason is because of these networks, right? Reliable, up and running, uh, very frequent, 
Um, yeah, I mean, I could go 80 to 100 miles and find a station every 100 miles, and that's what you have to have when, when you have bad weather, elevation, traffic jams, rerouting. You have to have enough frequency in the stations to where you can make some changes, and we have. And now with that car, I can, uh, I can go 200 plus miles, maybe even 270. I'm hoping I can get 270, but I'll let you know. Uh, back in Mississippi when the weather's warmer and flatter terrain, I, sh I should. So anyway, I won't keep any longer. I uh, just wanted to give you one last update at midnight. I'm here. I'm going to stay at a hotel, and uh, we'll get up in the morning and finish our trip from Laurel, Mississippi to Grafton, West Virginia, now back to Bristol, Tennessee, and then home to Laurel, Mississippi tomorrow. All right, this is John Ellis, EV Guy, out. Good morning, BEV Everything family. John Ellis, the EV guy here. Charging up one more time before we leave uh, to go home. Had a bunch of conference calls this morning. We had our BEV Everything big stops clubhouse call this morning. If you're on, you got a rich conversation. If not, go look up the uh, replay. You'll really enjoy some of the experts on that call talking about fixed operations and electric vehicles and how to grow the business. So uh, check that one out. But Hey, uh, excited for today. Get to go home, get to see the family. It's been a long journey, but uh, a good one. Uh, super excited again about my performance model. Three, uh, dual motor. It's giving me so much more range. Just gonna be such an easy, nice drive home. I'm excited. So uh, I'll just show you one more time, uh, another stop with these, all these Teslas. It's uh, coming pretty frequent. Uh, I know it's only seven and a half to 8% adoption, but it's growing and it's going to continue to grow so let's keep our heads out of the sand and let's work hard to uh be prepared i'll uh i'll leg this trip for you and this will be our final trip and then we'll put it all together and i'll try to have someone piece it all into one uh video instead of multiple little ones up on youtube but for now just check youtube if you're interested in uh seeing each of those stops that i'm making some of them are pretty funny pretty late at night pretty tired pretty aggravated uh I got to my hotel last night and their computer was down, so I, they couldn't check me in the room. I had to go to cross the street to a sleep in and look like the floor hadn't been vacuumed in a month. It's just part of the journey, right? 800 and almost 900 mile one way trip. Uh, you, you're going to get those things. But my EVs have been very reliable and uh, the charging has been very convenient. And this one, uh, much better than the other. We'll talk more about that when we recap the entire trip. All right, John Ellis, the EV Everything family, EV guy, out. Hey, BEV family, I'm in Chattanooga, charging up um, probably last time, if not maybe in Meridian, just for a few percentage points, but um, I'm at, I've not been here before. I'm going to different charging stations because I can go longer now, so these aren't the ones I stopped at on the way coming through. But it's a nice one, as you can see. Uh, plenty of stations on both sides. It looks like 16 stations. I'm gonna go ahead and park and charge. Um, and then look at the area, it's so beautiful. Again, just, um, just a testament to Tesla and what they've done. They make sure you're safe, you're comfortable. Everybody's like, well, you gotta keep stopping. Well, I, it's been two and a half, almost three hours since I stopped. I had 40%. Um, when I stopped, I had plenty of battery left, but I've got to go to the restroom. And look, there's a Whole Foods. See it? I'm getting ready to call my wife and, and ask her if, uh, if she needs anything from a Whole Foods because we don't have one where we live. And also there are other things if you wanted to go and, uh, you know, there's a bank, dentist appointment, nice little shopping area. So uh, it's actually a treat. It's fun, you know, to get out and not to be stuck in a petrol station where you're smelling all those fumes and trash everywhere and dirty bathrooms. Uh, I think they were into something here. Anyway, some of you are going to say I'm a gasoline naysayer, and you're wrong. I've got three gasoline vehicles and one electric vehicle, but uh, I do love them. And I love the concept, and as it grows, it's only going to get better. Okay, uh, we're going to take this stop. You'll see me on my last, and we'll be home from a almost 1,800-mile trip. So this is John Ellis, the BEV guy out hey BEV family this is my final stop before I go home last charge super excited about it but look you know 
I enjoyed the trip. It's been a tough one, but I've enjoyed it. I've learned a lot. Learned um, how to adapt, how to overcome. Marine Corps taught me that, but I had to use it a lot. And everything has been well. You can tell by my face I'm tired. How cool is this, though? My last charging stop, and I'm watching uh, Phillies and the uh, Arizona Cardinals. I mean, I'm in back, so I'm so tired. Anyway, uh, I'm enjoying the hell out of myself. I'd be doing this at home. And I'll be home soon. I cannot wait. Um, it's been a long trip. But I'll give you a final recap tomorrow about how I felt about the trip from start to finish. But for now, John Ellis, EB guy, founder, co-founder, BEB everything, out. Well, we made it. It is, as you can see, almost 11. 30 we got uh, a little over 20 percent left 23 percent driving through tuscaloosa uh so good you know 180 miles uh 200 miles maybe and i didn't charge up all the way so really uh, um, glad to be home i'd show you my face but i'm exhausted i probably look like i've aged 20 years but it won't be long, much longer now, and I'll be in my driveway. It has been an incredible journey. I'll try to clean up the video, document it a little bit better for you in a sequential fashion. We've just traveled almost 1,800 miles in three days in two separate EVs, Teslas, of course, but two separate range Teslas. and. Um, there's definitely a distinction between the two. I hope uh, when you get to see the entire video, you'll see the differences and, of course, the struggles between one and the other. And um, then it can be done. You can drive an EV just about anywhere. Um, you just have to plan. And you just have to have contingencies in your planning. So nothing ever goes as planned. All right. Well, this is John Ellis, the EV guy. On his final leg home, I may have, I see I have 1.1 miles of a just shy of 1,800 mile journey in three days, two and a half days really. Um, excited to uh, get this up and use it as an educational piece and see your comments and thoughts. I hope everybody has a great evening. You be guy out.